Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim Worth with Morial TV and Morial Radio here via Skype with James Jacob Prash, who is live in England. Jacob, one of the believers asked the question is, what are the roots of amillennialism and why is it such dangerous teaching? Okay. We can talk about the roots of amillennialism, but it is not amillennialism, although a mistake, that is something I would describe as particularly or uniquely dangerous. What is dangerous is post-millennialism. The notion that we're in the millennium now, that it's the age of the church is the millennium. This was the basis of medieval Roman Catholicism. It's the basis of dominion theology and other such erroneous doctrines. If Satan is bound, I want to know who keeps letting him go. It's post-millennialism that's the most dangerous. Amillennialism is simply something that is wrong. It's mistaken. But there have been notable men of God who were caught up in that error, including somebody I hold in very high regard, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. He, of course, is now with the Lord, and he is no longer an amillennialist. But when he was with us, he was. Now he knows it was a mistake. Yep, tremendous man of God. So we have, where did it come from? Postmillennialism is easier to understand. When Constantine Christianized or pseudo-Christianized the Roman Empire, they had to spiritualize away the millennium and say it was fulfilled in the age of the church. The Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman, became the millennium. It got to the point where in 999 AD, Pope uh, Sylvester said it's almost the end of the thousand-year reign. Jesus will be back next year. And the same as we had a Y2K in our lifetime, they had a Y1K. They actually believed that Jesus was going to come in the year 1000. Uh, quite a situation. People began giving their land and their castles and their money to the Pope. Of course, when he, Jesus didn't show up, nobody got their money back. <laughs> This is post-millennialism. Amillennialism is different. It is rooted in a hermeneutical error. When we look at the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel, for instance, you would say, well, are the three and a half years, the 1,260 days, literal and actual? Most amillennialists I know would say, yes. Okay, so you believe that they are actual, literal days. Oh, yes, I have no problem with that. Okay. So time is literal in that context, in that sense, of the three and a half years. You believe the three and a half years is literal. Yes. Good. Well, on what basis, then, can you say if things like the three and a half years are literal, or the five months are literal, can you automatically switch gears and say the thousand years are not literal? You change your hermeneutic. There's an inconsistency in their hermeneutic. Now, we've explained many times on, our, on various of our teachings, such as One Messiah, Two Comings, why there must be a millennial reign of Christ, why it has to happen. For Jesus to be the Christ, Yeshua must be the Messiah, and for Yeshua to be the Messiah of the Jews, he must fulfill all of the Old Testament prophecies, both the suffering servant prophecies of Hamashiach ben Yosef, Messiah son of Joseph, and the conquering king prophecies, Hamashiach ben David, and set up the millennial kingdom. Those wonderful 
descriptions in Isaiah of the lion lying down with the lamb and long longevity that's antediluvian in, 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 in its magnitude or those descriptions of the millennial kingdom in the book second half of the book of Ezekiel, those things literally have to happen. Amillennialists change their hermeneutic. They take time seriously and literally where it, most of us would. Yes, we believe in the three and a half years and the five months and so forth. We, we believe that the, three, that the uh, two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 will be there three days and three nights like Jesus was, things like that. But when it comes to the millennium in chapter 20, they move the goalpost. They put a different program in their computer. They begin running on a different set of presuppositions. They spiritualize the text out of context. <coughs> now they are wrong. They are mistaken. Part of what fuels this is that they find certain aspects of eschatology or of the return of Christ difficult to reconcile, such as the Lord returning twice, once to rapture and resurrect the faithful believers, and then returning with them to set up the millennial kingdom. They have a problem seeing he's coming as it were, three times. They have a problem with that. They have a difficult time understanding how we can go to be with the Lord and then want to come back to earth again after we've been in heaven. Failing to understand things like, well, we want to be where the Lord is. Who wants to come back here? Well, here is where the Lord is going to be. It's not going to be the world as the world is now. It's going to be the earth as it was in its pre-Adamic state. It's going to be the original plan God had for Adam and Eve and for mankind before man fell. They're not understanding the nature of the millennium. There are other things they have problems reconciling, reconciling and putting together. Um, <clears throat> why will there be sacrifices in the temple in the millennium if Jesus died once and for all, again, they're not understanding the nature of those sacrifices. The Old Testament blood sacrifices, were told in Hebrews, could never take away sin. They were temporary provisions for the sins of Israel, at least for faithful Israel. And they were types or shadows about what the Messiah was going to do as the Paschal Lamb, as, as, as the goat, and so forth. In the millennium, it'll be the same thing. Only instead of being types and shadows of what Jesus is going to do, they will be types and shadows of what he did do. For the reason that the people born during the millennium will not have the same concept of sin as we do. Satan will be bound, there'll be no temptation, and there will not be the world, only the earth. They won't be able to relate to sin the way we can, because we had a fallen nature before we were saved, and we have an old nature, even as believers. They will not be able to cope with that in the same sense we do. Even though they will need to become regenerate, because they're the descendants of Adam, there'll be no devil, and no temptation, and no world. It's only the flesh, and that'll be completely subdued when Jesus rules with the rod of iron. So these temple sacrifices we read about in Ezekiel and so forth in the millennial reign of Christ will be teaching tools, a way to teach about the atonement and what Jesus did do, the same as they were a way to teach about what he was going to do to the Old Testament saints. So they're misunderstanding the millennial sacrificial system and its reasons. They're misunderstanding that Jesus comes first for the triumphant church, but then he comes back and establishes the millennial kingdom. And to facilitate this, to get around it, they just spiritualize the millennium away and say it's not to be taken, taken literally. But to do that, they have to change their hermeneutic, their way of interpreting the scripture. 
they'll take portions, in fact, most portions of the book of Revelation literally in terms of time. But when they get to the millennium, they don't take it literally. They change the rules. You have to be consistent in your interpretative methodology, and they're not. Now, these people are not the villains. They're not the people who hold the most dangerous beliefs. They're wrong. It needs to be addressed. It should be corrected. But they're not the villains. What is really, really nefarious, what is seductive and potentially dangerous to the body of Christ is not amillennialism, but postmillennialism. They're the people who are in serious error. Thank you, Jacob.